There's no doubt about it. Time-lapse videos are cool. Have you ever wanted to make a time-lapse video? Maybe you've got a 3D printer. Or maybe you started some seedlings. Or maybe you just want to watch that vacuum run around the house and see what it's doing. In any case, I'm going to show you in this video how with Home Assistant and a cheap $5 camera, you can do this on your own. Hey everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So I had this project where I wanted to start some seedlings and I thought it'd be really cool to kind of watch them grow. So I got this camera and I flashed it and I've tied it into my home assistant so that it would pick up an image once every minute. And then the idea was that I could compile all the images into one master video at the end of the day. So I started on my project and before you know it, I had it done and I thought, well, this is something that some other people might want to do. So let's show them how to do it. And here I am. So uh, without any further ado, let's get started. I'll put a link in the description to a blog post that outlines the entire project from beginning to end. It has all the code that I've pasted in. So if you uh, need to use it, it'll be there for you. Um, if you find the video useful, please like and subscribe. Thanks. So the first thing we need to do is download the source code that we're going to use and extract it out. And then uh, if we drill down into the directories here, we can see just exactly where this project is. We're going to drill back down to it later once we get the, uh, the IDE set up. Now, for my case, I'm using Platform IO. And this is kind of new to me. Um, I'd used the Arduino project before, but this was um, kind of a lot of fun to get into. So what we're going to want to do is uh, start a new project. Um, I'm using the AI Thinker, so I'm typing in the AI Thinker here and choosing that board. Now we'll drill down into the libraries again and go into the example folder and the camera. And we want this camera web server right here. So we'll let the platform IO do its thing and it's going to set up some things. Now we need to set up some libraries in here as well. So um, you can see these where it's red here. That's because it's not it's not resolving all the dependencies that it needs. Open that up and search for the ESP32 CAM, and that should find the Expressive Library. There it is, and we're going to pull that in. We're going to add it to our project. And that's going to pull all of the necessary library information in there. Okay, so now we'll open our project uh, configuration. And I'm going to add in, uh, by default, the speed on this is uh, 300 baud. So um, I want to upload and monitor at a higher rate. So we're going to put that information in here. Okay, all set. Now, the latest version of the project files that I got, when I first started this, I did the Arduino libraries. This version seems to have the, um, the sample code commented out. So I have to go through and remove that from the beginning and the end in both the camera web server Ino and the app HTTP uh, CPP. Okay, and all that red's going to go away. Poof. All right, now let's switch to the proper board. In this case, it's the AI Thinker, so we're going to put that. And let's put in some fancy smanchy Wi-Fi, you know. You should never use password as a password. Just saying. Now, uh, the definition I chose here, um, it defaults to that... Um, smaller QVGA which is only 320 by 240 so I wanted a higher resolution and so we're going to default to uh, that XGA by changing this code here now here's what the camera looks like it's all wired up ready to go 
and so now once all the changes are made here in our code we're going to be able to go ahead and uh, upload and monitor it so it's all connected up ready to go we're going to compile okay i sped this up it really takes a bit longer than this so um, you didn't want to wait for a minute for this to go so uh, we'll speed that up All right, so Wi-Fi is connected. Here's the IP address we've got. And if we put that into our browser, here's what we see. And you can see it defaulted to, uh, well, that's UXGA. Why is that? Oh, because I already had it open. And there's my hand. Yay, it's working. That's good. So we're ready to move on to the next phase. So we flash the camera um, here as if I'm uh, doing a video stream. Uh, you can see the uh, code coming through on the monitor. See each one of those images, the MJPEG images, um, dumps out to the monitor. All right, so uh, I've got it added here at the bottom. I mean, and you'll see I have it in here twice, but that's that's okay. I actually commented that out um, and redid it. Um, and we also put in the shell command down here. Notice the shell command here at the bottom. Um, that's kind of critical for our whole setup so uh, we want to put that in the same time that way we don't have to um, put in one start the camera up put in the shell command start the camera uh, the restart home assistant again so here we go and now we'll go check the config and restart home assistant everything's good so let's go ahead and restart all right so we're back up and let's go ahead and create an automation. So we're going to call this ESP32 time lapse. And uh, I've got the time pattern here of slash five. Now, what that means is that it's going to, every five seconds, do a capture. And we don't want to do it through certain times of day. So we're going to put in 6.59.59. That's one minute before seven o'clock in the morning. And we're going to stop it at eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, it's going on for all days now. And what we're going to do is we're going to call a service. Now I'm kind of in the way here. So let me get out of the way for a moment. And so we're going to paste in this code here. Now that's basically calling a service every time this fires. And I wrote this script to take three arguments so that uh, if you wanted to call it individually using the service, you could, uh, if you didn't do a, a certain time range, uh, maybe for a few days, you could put a start and an end date, and then it will do the movies um, in between each date. So now we've got that created. I'm going to let that run for a little while and uh, capture some images. And then by the end, we'll have something that can compile together into uh, the final video. All right, so next we're going to do the automation that's going to do the time lapse itself. Okay. And again, we're going to call a service. So we're going to paste in the code. And as uh, as mentioned, the, the service takes three pieces of data. So um, it takes the start date. That zero tells it just do today. Uh, if there was an end date, it would do from begin date to end date. Now, it won't run over a month. So um, if you went from April to March, for instance, or March to April, rather, um, that wouldn't work because, you know, there's no... March 44th. Okay, so now we've got that set up. Let's watch that. Sure enough, it triggered. Now we'll go see in the media browser whether we actually got a video. And sure enough, here it is. Oh, look, time lapse of me sitting here. Yay! So it's more or less just that simple. I say simple, but you know. 
there was a lot of steps involved to get to this point. There was a lot of trial and error creating that, creating that script in order to get it to work properly and then realizing I needed different parameters and things like that. But when it's all said and done, you know, we get uh, something cool like this. We can watch the plants grow. We can watch the, the print camera. We can watch the vacuum run around the house, all these different things.